Good morning, Coffee Chatters. I am Katie Leon. I'm the Senior Marketing Manager with uh, Economic Alliance Snohomish County. Gary Clark is on a conference today, so I will be filling in for him. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping. Make sure to engage with us in the chat. Ask your questions. This is your coffee chat. Make sure you get all your questions answered. Add your organization to your name so we know who you're with. And we're going to do a quick video to kickstart us today to get you excited about our topic. There is no sound to it either. All right, and now without further ado, I'm gonna introduce our panelists today. We have Tyler Chisholm with City of Everett. We have Patrick Doherty with City of Edmonds. Liz Stenning with Downtown Everett Association. And Ben will be joining us from City of Linwood, but I do not see him on yet. All right, so to get started, um, can you, each of you kind of quickly introduce yourself and say one of your favorite things about where you live? I'll go first. My name is Tyler Chisholm. I'm the placemaking manager for the city of Everett. The elevator pitch for my job is that I leverage the community's assets and inspiration and potential to create public spaces and experiences that contribute to people's quality of life. A less flowery way of saying it would say that I work on things related to tourism, events, and cultural arts. And my favorite thing about where I live, it's just the culture. You know, I think that's what makes a place unique. So it's the sophisticatedness of, of Everett. Well, Patrick, I'll go next, you I guess. Muted, so go for it. <laughs> I'll go next. So I'm Patrick Doherty. I'm the Economic Development and Community Services Director for the City of Edmonds, which is a lot of res responsibilities under one hat. And um, so most of the stuff we'll be talking about this morning sort of falls under the economic development hat, which also includes, as Tyler said, the sort of tourism angle and the livability angle and making sure that we have a place that not only attracts folks from outside, but that is great and rewarding for the folks who live here. Um, I don't live in Edmonds, but I'll still say as if I do, um, because I, I love to be here every day. It's one of the good things about my job is that it's a great community full of art and culture and activities and a great sense of place and a really nice aesthetic looking out the window, even on a cloudy day. So yeah, I'm happy to be here. And, and I see a lot of people I know in the, in the, in the um, those attending, so hey Chuck and others, so nice to see you. Hi, I'm Liz Stenning with the Downtown Everett Association, and I just saw Ben pop up. I just saw your face, Ben. Um, so I um, work with the Downtown Everett Association, and we are managing about 40 blocks of the downtown of Everett, and we're working on revitalizing the downtown. We have a crew that cleans the downtown every day, 24 seven, seven days a week. Uh, we manage a parking garage, and we are recently, as of 2021, a Main Street organization. 
Uh, and we're just really excited about uh, working with the city of Everett. We partner with the city quite a bit, uh, bringing events and marketing, um, more residents and new vitality to downtown Everett. And Ben, you're gonna bring us home here. Uh, so you're just gonna quickly introduce yourself and say your favorite thing about the city of Linwood. Yeah, thank you. Um, my apologies uh, for whatever reason. I had a hard time getting on this morning, um, but glad to be here. Hi, my name is Ben Walters. I am the relatively new economic development manager for the city of Linwood. I started at the end of June. And, uh, you know, my favorite thing about uh, Linwood uh, uh, frankly, is its convenient location. It is easy to get to from just about anywhere uh, in the region. And I'm also a City of Linwood resident, so I'm very appreciative of that fact as well. Um, so to get us started today, just to make sure we're all on the same page, Patrick has a really good definition of what is placemaking. So Patrick, if you could kind of explain what placemaking is, and then if each of you could say where your city is at in this process, that'd be really helpful to kind of set the stage. Okay, thanks, Katie. I don't know if I have a definition, but I have some observations about it. So, well, placemaking, and this feeds exactly into Tyler's job description, which is great, is really kind of a kismet of things that come together in a particular place. It's not something you can always just do deliberately but we can always try to add to what's there to enhance the sense of place. Placemaking is about creating something that's genuine, something that's memorable and something that's long lasting in the place that you're talking about, whether it's your downtown or your neighborhood or, or where you live. Um, it's not one thing, it's not one particular kind of open space or one particular array of shops or restaurants or, or culture or arts, but it's really all those things. Placemaking is about having as diverse uh, an array of components to your place that are good throughout the day, night, weekday, weekend, seasons of the year, not just focusing on any one particular time or place or kind of activity. And it's also about having something that's, as I said, genuine and maybe even quirky, something that's unique and different that separates you from the other place. Um, I think that even in today's uh, world of lots of bland corporate shopping centers and malls around the nation, it's very common now to see each one of those try to do something different, try to have a farmer's market or try to have an event or try to bring in some independence and not just rely on the, the um, national brands um, to try to distinguish themselves from other places that are otherwise very similar. Because again, it's about place making. People wanna go places that are gonna make them uh, feel good, entertain them, and want to go back. And that's really the most important thing of all of this is that you want, you know, whether it's talking about a shopping center or a downtown or a neighborhood, you want people to come back, whether they're customers or whether they're residents or visitors. You don't want people just to go once, walk down the street, or go in the shop or go to the event and go, well, that was nice, but I'm never going back. You want people to go back because it's a wonderful place. And so that compendium of factors, sometimes it's like I say, kismet, is what is um, the key to successful placemaking, uh, in my opinion. Yeah, I'll, I'll add to that if I can, but quick note, Katie and all, I just got a notice from IT that my computer is gonna do a forced restart in 15 minutes, and I'm gonna try to message them and tell them not to do it. Uh, if it does happen, I'll join in via my phone. So please excuse me if that happens. Um, to add on Patrick's definition of placemaking, I say that placemaking is um, a hands-on process and an overarching idea for developing quality places where people want to live, work, play, learn. And these are kind of benign terms. We see them often on like apartment building marketing, live, work, and play. These are universal things that people want to be able to do uh, and do well. Um, Quality places is somewhat subjective, but there's a nice framework developed by the project from public spaces that I use. There's four key attributes for quality public spaces. They're sociable. They have multiple uses and activities. They have access and linkage, and they have a nice comfortable image. They're aesthetic, they're safe. Certainly as we looked at that video 
for Linwood, you see all of those elements happening. And so I would encourage anybody who's interested in placemaking to look at some of the work, the project for public spaces. I think you can see, uh, you know, the city of Everett, uh, our, we're sort, our work is sort of built around six, uh, really seven quality of life priorities that really sort of align with all of these things and the quality of life priorities here, uh, safe community, economic and cultural vitality, housing, transportation, and infrastructure, education and workforce development, engaged and informed community, and then a responsible and responsive government. So you can see how uh, this idea of placemaking being an overarching idea and a set of principles kind of weaves into really all that we do. I just wanna to add to what Tyler said about uh, hands-on and placemaking doesn't just happen. Uh, there's a lot of people, volunteers and effort behind the scenes. So whether it's um, hanging baskets or banners or cafe seating or you know, all the things that you see don't just magically happen. And it's um, a lot of times there's, there's just people working behind the scenes that you don't even know about. Uh, but I think that that's, um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a level of effort that's involved with placemaking. Um, just wanted to add that. Yeah, I'll, um, I'm going to take a stab at a definition. I've, I've thought about this over the years. Um, very simply, placemaking is about creating a place where people want to be. And increasingly in our world today, where people want to be also happens to be where businesses want to be. Um, and uh, I think from an economic development perspective, you know, increasingly placemaking is now a central tool uh, for trying to achieve our respective communities' uh, goals for itself. Um, not uh, there's the 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 kismet, as Patrick uh, pointed out, and I, I would agree with that. It's it's uh, creating that that sense of special place where you're you're drawn to it and you want to keep coming back, or you're you feel e an ease or a comfort or you're inspired. Um, these are all kind of emotional reactions that as human beings, we look for when we go from place to place or we're drawn back to. And um, increasingly we understand that. Um, I think we've always understand that as, as, as cities and as communities, but it seems more than ever um, um, people are, are seeking uh, that experience. Um, and, um, and increasingly that's helping to drive, um, the economics of our respective communities. Um, so there's a, uh, there's a qualitative, uh, element to it. And then there's the quantitative. Very well said. Uh, so now that we've talked about placemaking a little bit, how do we create that destination for our communities? And what are you doing currently to make, uh, city of Edmond, city of Linwood, city of Everett, a destination? And what does this mean for our community? Since we you went last, Ben, you can go first this time. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, the city in Linwood's really, I think, in a, a really unique and exciting uh, time in that the, the changes in the regional economy, um, the, um, the, uh, focus and opportunity of a more uh, urban style of living um, that's uh, within our society today um, has created this this new um, window, if you will, for the next phase in in Linwood as a community. Of course, Linwood has always been known for the Alderwood Mall. It is uh, in itself uh, a known destination. It a lot of uh, really smart people in, in uh, the corporate world have thought about, okay, how do we keep drawing people back there? It's gone through its transformations. Um, it's going through another one now as they add um, housing uh, uh, to their mix where before there were uh, just uh, giant surface parking lots, there's a, a brand new urban style um, uh, apartment building with uh, ground floor retail in the middle of a mall. Um, so, you know, the evolution of that mall is 
um, I think, part of our story. But where the real um, exciting opportunity, I think, for transformation in a positive way for our city is in city center, which is the area that is uh, west of uh, the mall. Um, and of course, where uh, the Linwood light rail station is being uh, constructed. And um, for those of you who saw the video on Northline Village, um, you know, that speaks to one exciting opportunity. That is uh, a clearly a, a vision for placemaking from a, a large corporate development perspective, although with many kind of like Main Street or small town downtown elements with the park and the retail at the ground level. Uh, but of course, that's at a big scale in terms of what it's it ultimately hopes to achieve. I think on a more intimate scale um, that we're trying to work on is in the center of uh, city center um, is um, creating um, a new, uh, very walkable street. Um, we're uh, designing a new street, uh, 42nd, that would break up our super blocks um, through an area that is currently characterized as single story retail spaces. Uh, we have uh, new apartments and hotels that are going up in the immediate vicinity of that area. And we see an ex exciting opportunity to create more of a, uh, a more personable, intimate um, center there, um, perhaps creating for the first time a real downtown for, uh, for Linwood in and around that location. Our goal is to connect it in new ways uh, because we are all trying to get around in new ways. We're all um, tired of relying 100% on automobiles to get around and uh, connecting the light rail, north line, um, with a promenade, which would be a very people-focused, uh, pedestrian, um, bicyclist-focused connection from uh, Northline Village, the, <clears throat> the light rail station through this new city center, uh, and then onward to uh, the Linwood Convention Center, which is our other unique opportunity uh, where the Public Facilities District owns 13 acres in and around the, um, uh, the existing Linwood Convention Center and is in the process of master planning that uh, to create, again, a new uh, opportunity. As you can tell from what I'm describing, <clears throat> it's where Linwood is at in terms of placemaking is more larger scale urban uh, uh, development in the future. Uh, Linwood does have uh, within its residential neighborhoods, you know, um, uh, more of that traditional feel, um, uh, but it's still a relatively new city. We don't have the wonderful old bo bones to be rediscovered like City of Everett or, um, uh, or City of Edmonds. Um, so our, our focus is more looking ahead um, is how I would characterize where we're at. Thank you, Ben. Um, real quick before the other panelists answer, um, there's a couple questions or a couple comments in the chat to make sure to speak to um, race, social justice, economic justice, and inclusion when you're speaking of placemaking and our elderly population disabled um, people who um, are not able to enjoy like bike, bicycling and how they can be incorporated into placemaking. Uh, Tyler, I'll go to you next just in case you get kicked off. Yeah, good news. I've been watching this timer go down here like it's a bomb about to go off. And my IT department literally just shut it off right when you were turning it over to me. And I'm so relieved that I'm not going to have this forced restart. Way to MacGyver it. <laughs> yeah, I've been over here. I'm trying not to seem rude when Ben is talking. I'm on my phone texting my IT department. So I apologize for that. Um, Want to address the questions in the chat and then also talk about destination development. I think rather than maybe list the projects specifically that we're working on, maybe I'll talk about some principles of destination development that, that we bring to the 
projects. And these are some things that I developed uh, and worked on with Snohomish County Tourism when I was working with them 2018 and 2019. I think Snohomish County Tourism did some really great work to sort of look at the tourism product, integrate it with um, kind of recognize that um, tourists and residents are not two, nest, two separate audiences, but people like to visit places that people like to live. Uh, so I'd say the first principle would be this idea that the community is the expert. Um, empower your people, leverage the assets you already have. It'll create community buy-in. It'll build rapport. I think we often get enamored by outside investment, and I think outside investment is really important, but I think building rapport with your local stakeholders, empowering your local businesses, and I think in terms of equity, I think that's a that's a key component to equity. You know, we've done this through a uh, current uh, grant program that we're running right now called the Everett Forward Grant, um, which is empowering some local businesses to kind of participate and grow in this, uh, grow alongside of Everett that's experiencing tremendous growth right now. This other principle that I alluded to um, is to stop thinking about tourists and residents as separate buying cohorts or separate audiences. Tourists are temporary residents. People love to visit places where people love to live. If you develop amenity product for the people who live in your city, amenity product is maybe too buzzwordy, particularly as I'm addressing some of the questions in the chat. Um, but for example, we moved our large uh, garden and arts festival, Sorta Culture. It's uh, happened in Legion Park for years. Legion Park is a beautiful destination for a garden and arts festival, but it's not very accessible for people, um, particularly those with limited mobility. Um, you know, it's on grass, you have to take a shuttle to get there. So moving the event downtown, I think has helped make it way more accessible, which has in turn brought more people, which has supported the artists and the downtown businesses. Another destination development principle um, is that uh, cities and destinations in the eyes of the consumer are lifestyle brands. People choose these places emotionally and they justify them intellectually. And I think to choose a place emotionally, you have to see yourself living there or visiting there and living your best life. And I think in term to tie that back in with equity, you know, and I think Everett does a great job of this, of like making sure that we're considering everybody and working to protect and advance the quality of life for every living thing here through our programs and development. And then the last thing um, in terms of destination development, and this doesn't address the questions in the chat, so forgive me, but I think it's important Millennials are the largest buying cohort. They passed baby boomers, and I'm speaking as a millennial, so forgive me. Soon to be followed by Gen Z. Give millennials what they want, authenticity, experiences over things, material things. And then also, and this does tie in with equity, that the millennial buying cohort specifically are principled consumers. They want to do business with brand, so that's a city or a destination or anything that they're going to spend their money with. I think this is universally true that they want to support and work with, live with organizations that are trying to make the world a better place. And I think equity principles are, are a key component of that. So um, that's what I have to add to destination development. Patrick or Liz, do you have anything to add? Go ahead, Patrick. I saw you come unmuted. I saw you unmuted. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> well, um, yeah, that's hard act to follow both of those things. Uh, from the perspective of Edmonds, I think that, you know, um, luckily we inherited a nice traditional downtown environment. We've got the location by the sea, beautiful views, the ferry. There's a lot of built-in things that 
create a, a unique sense of place and an aesthetic of place that is that is positive. And you know, when I first came to work here seven years ago, um, I sort of felt like people were sitting back on their laurels and kind of going, "We're a great place." And let's just let's just uh, you know advertise that more and get more people to come. And I can remember one particular event. I'll just tell, I mean, one moment, it's just a quick anecdote when they sat down with me about this time of year, it was probably more like September, um, the downtown organization and some other folks and said, hey, the city normally spends X amount of dollars every year helping us advertise the holidays. And I went, okay, great. What do we do here in the holidays? And again, I was one month into the job. And they said, well, we have, usually we come up with a theme to decorate with, and we have the tree lighting ceremony after Thanksgiving. And then we have the tree lighting ceremony and, you know, we have the tree lighting ceremony. And I was basically like, that's it? That's all you have? Well, it's cute. I mean, let's just advertise it. And I went, no, I'm sorry. I'm not putting in X thousands of dollars if there's nothing else happening. I said, you can't just take for granted that the same stuff is going to continue to always be enough for, and here we go to the issue of inclusivity, for a diversity range of people, for different ages, for different uh, demographic cohorts, or people from different areas. I mean, let's come up with some more things. And so we just kind of did a whiteboard and what are all the ideas of things that can happen during holidays that make people you know want to go somewhere and we instituted some of those ideas without going into detail but i guess the point of that is that you really have to be mindful as um tyler just made reference to you have the changes in demographic cohorts the changes in your population the changes in the regional population and the needs of a, a greater and more diverse um you know set of folks that <clears throat> want to come to your maybe they don't want to come Maybe that's the problem because they don't see themselves there. We have an issue in Edmonds where um, we were designated Washington State's first creative district, which is great in the whole downtown, a creative compendium of businesses and activities and events and venues. It's wonderful. But we also discovered that it's very white. It's very middle class. It's very somewhat leaning older population. Um, and one of the charges of our creative district advisory committee is to come up with ways to engage a greater range of populations, people, demographics, students, elderly people, uh, people with mobility issues, and then of course, a full range of uh, people from different demographic backgrounds. And that's going to be a challenge for us, but we've already thought some great ideas. And, uh, you know, that's, that's an important part of placemaking too, because the place may be physically the same, but it grows over time. And so you need to be mindful of that. You need to be mindful of, of growth over time. And, and then also the events. And one of the things we were chatting about um, before this actually started was, and this isn't in any way to diss the video, <laughs> but because this is 99% of all presentations, as I was mentioning right before Ben joined. Every time you see a presentation, whether it's an architectural rendering or a video or whatever, it's always a sunny day. And everybody's out, you know, sitting on the grass, having a picnic or pushing a stroller or flying a kite or whatever. And, the, you know, it's often a team of architects from Southern California or Washington, D.C. or something. And I used to be on the design review board for Seattle. And I used to stand up in the middle of those meetings sometimes and say, have you been here before? Have you ever been to the Northwest? Do you realize it rains 150 days a year or whatever the number is? And I think it's important also to remember that when we actually do the designing and the programming of spaces and activities, that we remember that this is not always a sunny place. It's not always 72 and we can sit on the grass with our you know, activity and our picnic. We need to remember that a key part of making a place, whether that's a physical public space or whether it's a whole downtown or a neighborhood, a key part to making that viable and, and attractive is to remember that we have rainy weather, we have cloudy weather, we have cool weather, windy weather, and how are those activities and how are, is that coming together of people gonna happen in those kinds of conditions as well? That's very well said, Patrick. And I feel like um, very true Pacific Northwest of, I had someone tell me that when the rain season come, we all come out of hibernation. I'm like, that's a good way to look at it. Um, Liz, do you have anything to add? Oh, I just, I just wanted to add on that. I think some of these places like Edmonds, um, Snohomish, you know, they're, they're more destinations. People know about them. People go, to, they seek them out, they go to them. I think in Everett, it's a little, a little more under the radar. I know people are coming to Everett because of events or, um, you know, they, they, they were going to come to something specific like Funko. Um, and I, I recently brought a colleague to Everett and we did a walking tour 
and we we walked through spaces that she just wouldn't have found on her own and it was like this light bulb aha moment of oh like she felt like she really discovered something and i feel like um there's people who are uh, rediscovering Everett because they have a good experience, whether it's an event or because they stumble into some places. And I think um, I'm, I'm excited about that. And I think um, right now we're not like the destination that people really think of um, to go to for the day or the weekend, but I think that that's, that's a, there's a building movement there. I would just throw one other thing out is, is in this, when you were talking, Liz, about Everett, it really reminded me of it's important, especially with existing places, so not so much a new place you're building up, like the new Northline Village or something, but when you've got an old neighborhood or an older downtown or a district, to be genuine and true to what you are and not try to fake it. Um, you know, and Everett is a established, older uh, urban center with some beautiful historic buildings, a walkable environment, some missing teeth here and there, but that's fine, they'll be filled in over time. And to be true and 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 um, you know honest and genuine about that heritage, that reality. It's an urban experience. Don't try to be a suburban mall. Not that you are. I'm just saying, you know, as an example, or or Edmonds trying to be too urban or too something. I mean, it's just like recognize what you are and celebrate and work on and and build from that. I think that's important too. People want genuineness. That's what brings them back. They might go there for the event and love the event and not really like the place it is because otherwise they're thinking it's not so great, but they go to the event and then they look around and go, this is also a lovely place. Now I want to come back when the event's not happening, interact here, have something to eat, shop, meet friends here, whatever. And that's because it's a genuine and interesting place. And the human scale is also important. I was going to mention this earlier too. Human scale is a really important part of placemaking because we're making it for people. And a lot of times um, people will say, oh, so that means we have to keep the buildings low, you know, one and two story buildings. It's like, no, not necessarily. Um, and we have this debate in Edmonds. I mean, our downtown is quite low scale, but it's very human. It's also very human scale. And it isn't because of the height of the buildings. It's because of the narrow streets, the small blocks, the different shops and the different or the different buildings at human scale intervals. You know, every 50 to 100 feet, you've got something different. That's what's human scale about. I mean, you can go to either new developments or old European villages that have four or five story buildings, but they're you know, breaking at a 50 to 100 foot or even less interval. There are narrow streets. There's beautiful little open spaces at the appropriate locations. And that's all human scale with taller buildings. It's not about the height of buildings. Conversely, you can have one and two story buildings separated by huge parking lots and wide streets and there's nothing human scale about that. So human scale, urban form is really important too to achieving uh, a good sense of human placemaking. I'd like to respond to that. Um... And I feel a little bit defensive in my response. <laughs> I love you, Patrick. I look up to you in a lot of ways, but your comment about Everett, the missing teeth. Uh, <laughs> and no, I'm, I'm joking mostly, but I think when people think about Everett, when you're characterizing it, the historic downtown, stay true to that. Yes, that is true. Everett is an old historic city and it's a, and it's a beautiful part of Everett. But I just remind people that Everett is, uh, we pioneered commercial aviation. We have some of the most talented workforce in the world here. I mean, we're working on uh, nuclear fusion. We have a tremendous amount of green um, energy companies moving to Everett to sort of try to change the world through technology. And so, yes, Everett is very historic and charming, but Everett is also very, uh, future, uh, futurist in its personality. Got the thumbs up from Patrick. <laughs> um, so I feel like all of you have kind of hit the nail on the head a little bit. When I first moved here 10 years ago, you know, we located in Snohomish County because it had lower taxes and we're like, we're still close enough to Seattle. It's like 20 minutes away. And then you've all done such a great job. I, I find myself never going to Seattle because we have everything we need here. And there's so many fun things happening here in Snohomish County. That's like, see, Seattle, what? I'm like, don't come here for Seattle. Come here for Snohomish County. We have like a lot of things happening. So speaking of that, what upcoming projects are you really excited about uh, that you're undertaking or something that you have recently done that people might not know about? And whoever wants to start, feel free to just start jumping in. 
All right, I'll jump in. Uh, we have a couple of new projects. Again, everything's small scale in Edmonds. And, you know, uh, when we have missing teeth, it's a tiny little tooth that we <laughs> insert in a little building that's 100 feet wide in. Uh, so that's what I was referring to, Tyler. There's a few properties in downtown Ed uh, Everett that are waiting for a new building. Understood. Um, but uh, when we are little missing teeth, because we had certainly have them too, um, two new things are coming to Edmonds that are really great. One is just opening. I mean, I went by it yesterday and I felt like I could walk in the door, but I'm sure they're doing some finishings and furnishings. And it's a, it's a complex called Graphite. It's at Second and Main. It's an arts complex. It's totally a labor of love by a local sort of philanthropic minded woman. Um, and uh, she's partnered with one of our um, folks in the arts community. And it's gonna have gallery space and studio space, a um, little bit of performance space, a cafe um, and residence. So it's this totally mixed use arts kind of founded thing called Graphite. And then on the other side of Maine, sort of upper Maine, at sixth and Maine is the first phase of a multi-phase redevelopment slash new development. Um, they took an old kind of Quonset hut style, uh, former grocery store, I guess, from the forties that had become other things over the years and turning it into Main Street Commons. So the first part will have some new uses, restaurants and shops, and then there'll be a two-story addition that'll have uh, the sort of event space and uh, again, restaurant shops, all that. So. Those are uh, uh, two really interesting things that are happening in, in downtown Edmonds that I think is you know great. And then lastly, I'll just say that um, uh, mayor delivered his budget address last night. And what we've been doing this year and, and moving forward is really focusing on placemaking in the Highway 99 area and kind of dubbing that area uptown, uptown Edmonds, because it, you know to continue to refer to a neighborhood as the name of the highway, which doesn't even have a name, Highway 99. As some of your cities have given your Highway 99 stretches a name, we don't even have that. Um, so we're going to be focusing on the uptown area. We're doing a community re uh, renewal, pro a community renewal process up there, and really trying to do placemaking in an area that needs a lot of attention. Um, so those are two highlights. We can go next. Um, I don't have any rebuttals for what Patrick said this time. <laughs> uh, one of the things that I'm really excited about, and I alluded to it earlier, is a grant program that we just uh, held called the Everett Forward Grant Program. For those of you who are familiar with like lodging tax grants um, and maybe familiar with some of the CARES grants that went out, which were like business stabilization, it's kind of a mix between the two and it's utilizing ARPA funding. And we've used the the grant program has funded projects that range from arts and culture and events to brick and mortar uh, business and facade improvements, childcare, education, STEM, entrepreneurship and workforce development and some human services projects as well. And I think that uh, is just another great infusion of, of investment and capital to support and empower our local organizations to sort of participate in placemaking uh, and all of the components of placemaking. I'm also, I don't know if you saw the Herald this morning about the new apartment building in downtown Everett. Um, it's the Marquee Apartments. It's a Scott Doyle real estate property. If you read the article, it alludes to all of these other aesthetic lifestyle market rate housing to increase density and bring in more foot traffic. I think that's uh, really excited. That critical mass is uh, key. Uh, again, this placemaking principle of play, uh, quality places are sociable. Sociability requires people to be there to be sociable. Um, certainly our waterfront and our riverfront uh, are, are gonna be game changers. Um, I, you know, the waterfront and the what the Port of Everett is doing and kind of shout out to Lisa Lefebvre and, everyone at the port for the great work down there that is really making Everett known as a waterfront destination, which I think, you know, if you just drive through Everett or hear some of the stories of Everett over, you know, the years that you may not realize that Everett is an amazing waterfront destination. Some other things that we're working on like Wintertide, which is our um, holiday destination development. That's a partnership between all of these organizations throughout the city to sort of work together to um, provide activities for residents and tourists during the holiday season. 
So Tyler, you took most of the things I was going to say, but I will make uh, one shout out to Sorry. the Imagine Children. No, it's okay. The Imagine Children's Museum is, is expanding. Some of you may know this or not, but uh, if you follow them on, I don't know if it's Facebook, Instagram, or or what, but they're they are literally craning in really incredible things like big boats and whales and artwork into the building while they're actually erecting the building. Uh, so if you get a chance to, to see what's happening with the Imagine Children's Museum, it's quite impressive. And it's going to be just such an asset to downtown and, to, and really to the to Snohomish County. We will be doing a coffee chat with them at a future date, just as a little plug of sneak peeks of what they're up to and seeing their expansion. So it's going to be really exciting because they have a lot going on. Um, and Ben, do you have anything to add about City of Linwood? Yeah, and, and I think this speaks a little bit to the point that I, uh, er, the other panelists have made about auth the importance of authenticity, um, uh, but and also related to, um, you know, who we're appealing to, um, and and the need to uh, do that in the most uh, conscious and deliberate way to be all to be truly inclusive in how we think about that. And so our planning uh, department is um, just wrapping up a um, uh, planning exercise that's won awards for its um, outreach um, in the South Linwood neighborhood. So this neighborhood is characterized by a mix of um, uh, single family residential homes and, and some apartments mixed in with um, commercial and light industrial. So think uh, a suburban version, if you will, of uh, Georgetown in Seattle or South Park, um, where you've got this crazy, you know, mix of industrial and residential right next to each other. Um, and that you know, that can be characterized by a lot of conflict, but it can also create something truly unique. Um, and so a tremendous amount of work has gone into with the community in thinking through how do we preserve uh, elements of this in terms of affordability, in terms of livability, in terms of a good place to do business, um, uh, uh, but then enhance it and improve it without the uh, prompting the dreaded G word gentrification um, and which is, you know, viewed rightfully in part as as the antithesis of uh, inclus inclusivity. And um, that's what we're working on. So uh, I've spoken so much about, you know, this almost clean slate and radical redevelopment of our older um, uh, commercial areas around the and transit oriented development, but here's something that's that's unique um, that maybe uh, could um, create something that's uh, 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 attractive and um, can serve in, in a different way uh, the needs and, and opportunities for Linwood residents. Um, so moving on, uh, what are the biggest challenges that your city faces and how are you going to overcome them? Um, let's start with Liz this time. Uh, so I just wanted to mention that Dr. Linda Perales um, put something in the chat about investing in ADA accessibility, build historic buildings, and just infrastructure, urban trees. And that was uh, something I had jotted down that uh, one challenge, you know, just with any urban area, also with um, limited budget, are um, adding more street trees, for instance, um, adding more ADA ramps. Uh, like in downtown Everett, for instance, we have some of our light poles don't have power to them. So it may seem simple to plug in holiday lights, but actually that's a bigger investment, a bigger job to actually get those lights to be powered. So I think that um, probably all cities, particularly older downtowns, face um, some of this infrastructure needs that need to be addressed and need, and we all need to be creative about it. Um, 
And then I, I just wanted to mention that, um, like in downtown Everett, we have a lot of historic buildings and, we, and I think that there's a lot of potential in uh, rediscovering those, using those, um, rehabilitating those. Um, and it's just a, an untapped amount of really square footage and area. And, um, and uh, that, I think that is a challenge, but it's also a big opportunity. Maybe I'll jump in. Um, I kind of alluded to it earlier. I think Edmonds, you know, we have a small downtown. So I'm focusing on downtown right now, but I'll jump also. Um, and so grow, we sort of suffer the growing pains of related to being a successful and attractive place. People want to come here. We've had a bit of a change in the last few years where more and more restaurants uh, have come online where there may have been some shops before. Um, which is great and people love that. So we're getting kind of a reputation as kind of a foodie scene, but that is a change, does bring a little bit more congestion and traffic and parking issues at certain times of day. Um, but the challenge I think mostly is, is trying to continue to provide that quality place, talking about place making, quality place that's attractive um, in, a, in a place that doesn't have a lot of room to grow. So I think in the future, you know, if you go off of the main streets of Maine and 5th and 6th, and a little bit of Dayton, um, there's a lot of just kind of old 70s, 80s style office buildings and things. And eventually those are going to probably have to change a little bit to accommodate what people really want, which is more of the quality environment of downtown Edmonds. But then our biggest challenge, again, like I said before, is, is going to be transforming an area like along the Highway 99 or Uptown area. That's going to be our biggest challenge is trying to attract investment at the right scale um, that's going to transform it from mostly auto-oriented, uh, old, old commercial buildings, some of which are kind of unsavory, some of which are vacant, um, and to try to create a new kind of living, working, mixed-use uh, neighborhood that's really uh, very welcoming to a broad range of people. So that's a big challenge we have in front of us. But, I mean, but all the while trying to create a sense of place there and not just fill it in with anything that comes like okay there's a big project doesn't matter what it looks like or what it is you know try to still work with those developers to 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 be concerned about the ultimate result of all that development that there's still a sense of place there that attract people i can <clears throat> go next and kind of speak to some challenges i think that there's this Everett certainly has its fair share of challenges. I mean, Everett is the largest city in Snohomish County, and we have a lot of things on our plate and a lot of uh, services located here and, and things like that. And back to Dr. Paralyze and your question about investment, I think investing and ensuring that our people can make it here is something that Everett is um, doing to I, I'm sensitive to refer to people experiencing homelessness as an issue, uh, but there are certainly a lot of systemic issues that lead to poverty, and crime, and homelessness, and it's part of a larger conversation. Think of the investments that we've made to um, house the homeless, provide services, and um, you know, back to our Everett Forward grant and some of the things that that's, that's working to fund. Some of our partners on Casino Road to help uh, provide child care for young single mothers who need to or want to, excuse me, get back into the workforce. Things like that, I think, are important investments to make to ensure that our people make it here. Yeah, um, the investment part, I mean, certainly that's a huge component for the, the transformational developments that we've been talking about and sharing about uh, Linwood in our, in our city center. That's defined so much by the fact that that part of Linwood is regionally defined as a regional growth center. So within our regional uh, plans for managing growth, that area at that confluence of, 
you know, I-5 and 405, which has so defined much of uh, Linwood uh, as a relatively new city, um, is is going to define our our future. But as I think about that future, you know, we we certainly see the elements that we've talked about. And again, you know, it, it is a challenge with all this new development uh, to create that sense of place rather than just frankly, warehousing people and, you know, uh, uh, creating places where people can go and shop and, and whatnot or, or uh, go to their business and then go home, right? The, we don't have a lot of linger factor here. Um, uh, and, you know, if we're going to be successful, we're going to have to we'll think about that. We also need to think about uh, the changes not only in our in our demographics as a region or in Snohomish County uh, to be um, responsive um, to the needs of uh, people with diver diverse backgrounds and needs, um, but also um, how we fit within uh, larger, uh, bigger changes that are going on. And I'm thinking the comments here related to um, you know, the greenery and so forth, um, the, the natural environment. We're going through a kind of a branding exercise right now, trying to think how we're going to tell our story as these new developments uh, uh, come in the coming years. Um, and one of the things that our stakeholders have brought up is um, looking for um, an element of um, uh, more green space and then related to that sustainability um and the uh, and viewing that now as a as a community value um, and that's first time we've started to see that come up um particularly for folks who've been here at linwood so that's kind of interesting i don't know if that's a result of a demographic change or you know certainly it is climate change is a, a big part of our our daily conversation but that makes me think the, the exciting opportunity of all this new development, can we do it in a way that frankly is more sustainable? And it, are we as a city willing and able to um, incentivize that? And in so doing, does that potentially become part of our identity? Uh, what a radical thought, right? Uh, Linwood as a green district. Um, and, uh, but again, we're starting from a, almost a, a clean slate here in our city center. And so that is a possibility. That's a prospect. So thinking not only about our roots, but also about uh, new things coming down the pike that could help to inform and fashion um, what our um, urban vitality uh, could look like in the future. Thank you, Ben. I'm glad you said that. I, I love that um, sustainability being a community value and really focusing and being proactive to change how we do things to make it better in the future. So if we're going to be going into closing remarks here. So as part of your closing remarks, um, you can include what you want the business community to know. And also, where do you see your city in 10 years? What, where do you, like, if we overcome all of these challenges, where do you see your, um, your city in 10 years? And uh, it'll be about like within a minute or less, if you can all keep it kind of quick. Um, so I'm going to start with you, Tyler. A minute or less. Okay, here we go. Um, Univer Everett is universally known as a waterfront destination. There's a renaissance of arts and culture as Seattle becomes too expensive and artists move out of Seattle. Uh, I think we're going to develop into a green manufacturing uh, hub. Um, and then uh, I think... What do I want the business community to know about Everett? I'm gonna build on this thing I said earlier, whereas we want people to make it here. And that saying has a bit of a double entendre. We want to empower people to live their best lives here in Everett. But if you have something that you wanna make, if you're an entrepreneur, we have uh, we're a business friendly climate and we have the most talented advanced manufacturing workforce in the world. Thank you. That was a tough act to follow. Who wants to go next? <laughs> I'll just go along after Tyler with <clears throat> focus on downtown Everett. 
So I, in 10 years, we'll see more people living downtown. Uh, we'll see more cyclists, more pedestrians. <clears throat> we'll see more shops and restaurants and we'll see people uh, staying after work and wandering, wandering about, just more, just more people, uh, more vitality downtown. And I think I'd like people to know, um, I'm sure most of you have been to Everett, but if you haven't, we have lovely views of the waterfront. Um, there's something for everyone here. We have friendly people and affordable commercial spaces and lots of creative folks here. Well, I'll jump in. Uh, I wanna say a couple of things though they're not specific to Edmonds. And one of the things is that uh, in, in, in trying to get that vitality that we wanted, that sense of place as we work, uh, whether it's uh, Linwood or Everett or especially the uptown part of Edmonds, um, with new development. We've got big new development coming in. Uh, oftentimes these are, you know, um, big um, regional and national developers um, doing big projects. And sometimes, you know, after the fact, we can look back at those projects and go, gosh, you know, they don't really look that interesting compared to another suburb we've been to or another big city we've been to. And one of the ways to try to achieve that, and we don't always have the leverage, depending on what our permitting process is, or whether we're bringing any benefit, you know, any incentives, but to try to infuse some whimsy, or some special, fun, artistic, landmark type quality thing, something that makes it interesting, because placemaking can be even as a building. People say, hey, let's meet under that funny thing that's on the corner of that building. I've never known what it is, but it's a little sculpture. Or it's a little fun thing, like in Fremont in Seattle, which is full of crazy that we know that. But one of the new developments of, you know, 15 years ago added this metal sculpture thing to the corner of the building. And it's like, you know, people can say, I don't know what the name of that building is, but it's where the Starbucks is around the corner, but let's meet under that metal sculpture. It's little things like that that help make placemaking. It might be a huge, big building. It might be holding, you know, 120 or 500 units or whatever, an office building, but if it's got some whimsy or something really cool and interesting down at the street level, people are going to relate to that. And you'll see a lot of that in Portland. Walk around Portland sometime next time you're down there. And the Portland Redevelopment Agency, because they have a different relationship to the regulatory environment there, they get involved in almost every project. They throw a little bit of money in a project and that gives them some leverage to actually work with the developers. There's all sorts of cool little things, whether it's just the way they, you know, that just the window surrounds or little sculptures in the brick or something. I mean, it's just all sorts of little whimsy and that really helps make the sense of place. And so I guess that's a small scale thing to say that as I look forward to 10 years from now in Edmonds, I hope that our downtown has been able to grow off the off just the main two main streets and infuse that creativity and that sense of place into a little bit broader um, network of our downtown that becomes a more inclusive and more diverse downtown. And then I'm hoping that in the other neighborhoods, especially the uptown, Highway 99 uptown area, that we've been able to achieve a critical mass that bring people up there and that it is a memorable place and not just a collection of new development that nobody really, you know, paid attention to. And I know that was more than a minute, but I wanted to share that. Well, with uh, Linwood, uh, what I would want businesses to know is that uh, Linwood is um, emerging as a major regional commercial center um, that is going to be even more uh, connected to the region uh, than it already has been with light rail coming in 2024. And um, that um, it, we're, we're continuing to be um, uh, growing as the place that connects uh, King and Snohomish County um, uh, for commerce, for living, um, uh, for uh, hopefully over time entertainment. Um, that's what I would want the, the businesses to know. And uh, where do I see Linwood in you know 10 years? Certainly uh, uh, denser, uh, certainly more regionally connected. Uh, and I think the big question is, um, uh, can we truly create that, 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 uh, human scale sense of, uh, place? Um, uh, and, um, so look forward to, uh, checking in with you all in, uh, five or 10 years and seeing if we succeeded or not. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us today. And I think Liz, you said it 
that all these things seem like magical things that just happen, but we appreciate all your hard work to make these things happen and making our community so special and making them places that people want to come see and be at. Uh, opportunity really does live here. So thank you, Tyler, Patrick, Liz, and Ben for joining us today and sharing about all the exciting things your community is up to. Thank you, Katie. And with that, Thanks, everyone. We are at the end of Coffee Chats, um, but make sure to join us next week. We have Creating Opportunities Through Inclusion, same time. And then uh, the same week, we also have public officials and we'll, you'll have an opportunity to connect with your public officials via Zoom and see and talk about these upcoming projects and what money you want them to invest in different things. So make sure to join us next week. And uh, when you go to register, you'll also see we have a brand new website. So make sure to go check it out and give us some feedback. Thank you all uh, for joining us this morning. Thank you for the opportunity. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.